Sea turtles nest on our beaches from May through September and then the eggs hatch from July through November. The Department of Environment has been monitoring sea turtle nesting since 1998. Um, since then we've seen a very encouraging increase in the number of nests um, from about 30 nests when we started the monitoring to more than 300 nests in recent years. It is important to remember that each turtle can lay more than one nest, three to six nests per season typically, so our population is still very small and threatened. The main threats to the nesting population are illegal take of adult turtles, particularly nesting females when they come up onto our beaches to lay their eggs and also artificial lighting on our nesting beaches. Uh, while our nesting populations are increasing, these threats are also increasing, so we're very concerned about the long-term future of our populations. Lighting on beaches both discourages the adult female turtles from nesting, and it also misorients the hatchling turtles. It causes them to go in the wrong direction. So when hatchling turtles come out of their nests at night, they look for the brightest light that they can see and on a natural undeveloped beach that would be the moon and the stars reflecting off the ocean surface. But um, if there are other lights, street lights or lights on houses or hotels or condos, the baby turtles will go toward those lights instead of into the ocean. The department actually monitors beaches at night to look for artificial lighting that's going to impact turtle nests and we speak with property owners and see if they can actually switch off lights um, or try to redirect lights. We've also produced guidelines which provide clear and easy help to property owners and residents on coastal properties to advise on what they can do to minimise the impacts of artificial lighting. In order to establish if lighting is a problem at your property, you can carry out a nighttime audit where you actually walk the beach in front of your property to establish if there's any lighting that's creating a problem. Um, those lights which are the, the worst offenders are the large elevated spotlights and floodlights. So it's those lights directly illuminating the beach and that are in the sight line of the beach. So if you can see the source of the light, i.e. the light bulb, then the chances are it will create a problem. There's also problems from reflection. So if there's cumulative lighting, it can create a sky glow or it can reflect off the clouds, which also disorientates turtles and hatchlings. There are a variety of options available, um, cost-effective, flexible solutions. Um, simple things such as checking if you need all your lights on. If you don't, turn them off. Other options including repositioning fixtures and fittings, uh, shielding them so that the light only actually illuminates the areas it needs to, i.e. landward onto your property as opposed to the beach. You can plant vegetation screening so that the lights are landward of the vegetation and the light isn't actually reaching the beach. You could fit motion detectors on your lights so that they're only triggered by activity, human activity rather than the turtles coming up the beach or the hatchlings making their way into the ocean. There's a whole range of options and the, the purpose of the guidelines the department has produced is to, to assist property owners in terms of learning what they can do at their property. Some people think that being asked to reduce the amount of lighting on their property could increase the, the risk of criminal activity, but actually what we're keen to ensure is that the properties remain lit, it's just the beaches which remain in darkness. And studies have actually proven that if you increase lighting in areas, it doesn't actually reduce the amount of criminal activity. So therefore, carefully directed and positioned lighting can ensure that property owners remain, their properties remain lit and beaches remain in darkness. There are huge energy cost savings from turtle friendly lighting because generally they're amber LED bulbs that you would put into your fittings um, and the, there's up to 70% savings in energy costs. It also increases the survival rate of hatchlings and it also ensures that the mature turtles do come up the beach to lay their eggs rather than being put off by bright artificial lighting. So if people want more information about artificial lighting or the turtle nesting if you visit the department's website, which is www.doe.ky, we have lots of information on there. Also give us a call or email us and we'd be more than happy to talk through any concerns that you may have or ideas. Um, and if you do see any evidence of turtle nesting, whether it's tracks or hatchlings, then please do call the department and report that. It's an amazing experience to see the sea turtles nesting at night, to see the turtles nesting, to see the nests hatched, to see the nests on our beaches. It all happens during the summer, so it's an opportunity for ecotourism. We have lots of visitors saying that they've seen uh, sea turtle nesting for the first time. 
um, and that they're interested in coming back to, during another nesting season or to see nests hatch.